Hello, my name is Katie Eyre and I'm currently a CT1 surgical trainee in the Oxford Deanery. I'm going to present the results of our large audit project which we undertook in 2011, looking at compliance with documentation of VTE prophylaxis. This project not only shows how an apple a day can keep VTE at bay, but also how small changes can make vast improvements in clinical practice. As we're well aware in this country, VTE carries a large burden with high levels of mortality and high levels of morbidity, with 10% of patients uh, dying in our UK hospitals having an attributable cause of death to venous thromboembolism. These levels of morbidity obviously have significant associated healthcare costs. You'll also be aware of the drive to ensure that every patient has their risk of VTE assessed and recorded on admission and during their stay and as such our audit project focused on the top arm of the diagram on this slide. You may well also be aware that VTE is one of the performance measures that has been linked with the financial status of NHS organisations in England. As a result the documentation of an appropriate risk assessment is audited by the Department of Health. This project was undertaken in the Department of Acute General Medicine at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. This is a busy department with a number of acute wards and an emergency admissions unit. At the time of auditing, the JR was using paper clinical notes. However, VTE assessments were documented on electronic forms. This facilitates efficient internal and external audit and helps the Trust comply with the Department of Health requirements that 90% of patients have a VTE prophylaxis assessment. The next slide shows a snapshot of what this electronic system looks like. Um, this is the front page of the VTE assessment form and you can see how the doctor might work through this form. And if you look at the next slide, it shows the next sequence of questions that the, the doctor or clinician is asked. And at the end of the sequence of slides, then um, the doctor is encouraged to make a decision as to the most appropriate VTE prophylaxis for this patient. This form is then recorded in the patient's hospital uh, electronic record. The next slide illustrates the outline of this project. The project ran over five months, with four audit cycles being conducted in total. An initial, initial audit to assess the problem, and then this was repeated after each intervention, with a total of three interventions being introduced. The, the effects of the interventions were cumulative, in that each previous intervention remained in place as a new one was introduced. Time was allowed for staff to become familiar with new systems before audit was re-undertaken. Re the red box on this slide is in important to mention as, all, as this was a spot audit of all medical inpatients. This was undertaken after the second audit cycle and the reasons for this will become clear a little later on. So our initial one week prospective audit included all patients admitted to the acute medical take. We reviewed the electronic system to determine the proportion of patients admitted that had a completed VTE risk assessment within 24 hours of admission. The Department of Health requires that an initial assessment of all patients is carried out at admission, and we decided that 24 hours is a reasonable amount of time to give clinicians to complete assessments. Our initial audit showed that 287 patients were admitted over the one week, and only 67, 23% had a completed risk assessment. The next slide shows you a graph of the variability between teams with compliance with the VTE assessments. The darker blue representing those patients without an assessment and the lighter blue those patients with an assessment. Interestingly, it made no difference to compliance if the patients were admitted during the day or during the night or whether it was a busy or a quiet take. During our initial data collection process, we were criticised by some of our colleagues and accused of only focusing on the paperwork when it's the prescription of VT prophylaxis that saves lives. We were concerned by these criticisms and decided to explore further whether VT prophylaxis was appropriately prescribed in our hospital. So we did a spot audit. 138 inpatients were included 
And this graph shows that the majority of patients, 89%, had appropriate prophylaxis prescribed, but far fewer, only 37%, had a completed electronic risk assessment. This number is higher than the 23% of patients who had a risk assessment completed within 24 hours, which was the number found in our initial audit, as all assessments were included in the spot audit, no matter when they were completed during admission. So to break those figures down further, of those patients that had an electronic assessment form, 80% of the forms correlated with the prophylaxis prescribed. In those where there was no electronic form, only 46% had any documentation of the VTE prophylaxis decision in the paper notes. This left a large proportion of patients with no documentation as to why a VTE prophylaxis decision had been made. This is an obvious absence of record keeping and raises concerns regarding patient safety and clinician accountability. The electronic form not only enables the trust to record reliably that patients had a VTE assessment, but also holds clinicians accountable to the decisions that they make, improving patient safety. The results of this spot audit encouraged us that our audit should focus on documentation rather than on the prescription of prophylaxis. So our strategy for change was as follows. We consulted and engaged with staff and sought support for change from the organisation. We made changes to documentation systems and introduced innovative and sustainable technology. So intervention one, we started simple. We altered paper documentation used by the admitting teams. So this form that you see um, would be used by the admitting medical team to record patient details and their diagnosis um, for use at handover. And so in the investigations box on the right hand side, we included a box to tick for VTE, very simple. This increased compliance from 23 to 44%. At this stage, we just devised a questionnaire to establish the barriers as to why our colleagues weren't completing the electronic assessments. And the main themes that came out of this was that they simply forgot, or that in the midst of a busy shift or on the post-tape ward round, it was hard to access the static computers on the ward, and therefore the forms became a low priority. Our subsequent interventions therefore targeted these problems. So our second intervention was an electronic pop-up, and this was specifically aimed at reminding clinicians to complete the forms. It looks a little like this, as you can see on the slide, and gives the doctor the choice to complete it now or to cancel. If they select cancel, however, the pop-up returns every time someone logs in. As a result, compliance increased to 71%. So following the success of the electronic pop-up and the ongoing problem with accessing computers, we held a consultation with senior staff in the department to discuss the role of handheld computers in improving efficiency. As a result, iPads were supplied to each medical firm at a cost of £400 each. And you may think, gosh, that's a lot of money um, with 10 medical firms. However, the NHS Trust are at risk of a financial penalty of £188,000 per quarter if the Department of Health guidance for risk assessment isn't met. The iPads were securely linked to the hospital's wireless network and essentially brought the VTE risk assessment to the bedside. The junior doctors were able to complete the assessment during the post-tape ward round whilst the prophylaxis decisions were being made. It brought the two processes together. Obviously, as junior doctors, we loved using the iPads. They made life much easier. We could check laboratory tests. We could write discharge summaries at the bedside. And we could show patients their imaging. And in, in an increasingly paperless system, the use of handheld computers is only likely to become more prevalent. This innovative technology increased compliance to 90%, meeting the Department of Health requirements for VTE assessment. So in summary, you can see that from an initial baseline of only 23% of patients having a form completed on admission, each intervention improved compliance considerably, with a cumulative effect that nearly all patients were being assessed within 24 hours of admission. So to conclude, it is well recognised that safe prescription of VTE prophylaxis saves lives, it reduces hospital stay and significantly reduces morbidity. Appropriate pr prescription of prophylaxis in our hospital was good. Good documentation of the decision-making process is essential, but not always easy and accurately achieved during a busy medical take.
and we have shown that a range of interventions can be used to change attitudes and improve compliance with documentation. Tablet computers are an innovative and sustainable intervention that unite at the bedside the process of VTE prophylaxis assessment with its documentation. Handheld computers are likely to become increasingly prevalent and we think that this is a simple intervention that be, can be implemented across other departments and in other hospitals. This project illustrates how small changes inspired by junior doctors can lead to big improvements.